Okay, so today we're going to talk about a topic called the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, VS EPR, and in a move that makes exactly no sense, we pronounce that Vesper. All right, we call this Vesper theory. What I want to talk about is this. Did everyone build a uh, a uh, CH4 molecule. Okay. Now we know we know that the bonding of CH4 looks like what? If I had carbon in the middle, how would I draw, or what would the steps be for me to draw oh, a Lewis diagram of CH4? What would I have to do? What do we always do first when we're drawing a Lewis diagram? Count the electrons. So how many electrons do we have in this case, in the valence shell? Yeah, carbon gives me four. Four hydrogens give me four more for a total of eight. What would I draw first? Carbon in the middle, the hydrogen surrounding it. Normally, the least electronegative would go in the middle, but we know hydrogen can, right? What do I do next? Everything gets a bond. What do I do after that? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. What do I do next? All the surroundings get a full shell, right? Does hydrogen have a full shell? This one? This one? This one? Okay. So they all have a full shell. What do we do next? Count electrons. How many do we have? Two, four, six, eight. Is that the right number? Nope. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. We're good. Okay. And then what's the last step? Make sure carbon has a full valence. Does it? Nope. Yeah. Sure. Two, four, six, eight. My bad. That's okay. That's okay. So here we go. By the way, what kind of bonds is carbon making? Sigma. Yeah, so it's making four sigma bonds. Does it have any pi bonds? Does it have any lone pairs of electrons? Okay. What kind of orbitals do sigma bonds go in? Hybrid. So what? how many hybrid orbitals does this need? One, two, three, four, right? It's making four bonds. It needs four hybrid orbitals. What's it going to have to use to make those? an s orbital and how many p orbitals to make four? How many p orbitals do we need? Three. So what kind of hybridization is that? Good. So it's sp3 hybridization. All right. sp3 hybridization gives us four hybrid orbitals. How many electrons will be in every one of those orbitals for carbon to begin with? What is this doing? Do we know? Like if I draw a carbon's energy level diagram, I'll get one S. How many electrons go in there? Two. And then we now have the two sp3 orbital. There's four of them. How many electrons do we have to put in there? Four. Yeah. And so they'll go like this? No. No? no. no? Okay. No, 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 no. How do they go in? Go. One each. Like that? And that makes sense, doesn't it? Because each of those orbitals is now ready to make a sigma bond. All right, and that's what we've done the last couple days. And that's, you know, if it seems a little confounding now, it's just a matter of getting more and more practice. We'll make sure you get it. Today, you're going to get a bunch of practice with today's lesson. But I want you to look. You just built this, did you not? Does what you built look like what's on the page here? What's the same, what's different? Everyone hold those up. Let me make sure everyone's got one that makes sense. Good, good, good. In the back? Hey, good, okay. So everyone's got a little CH4. What do you notice about it? Okay, good. So that's the same as what we drew. What else? Sure, yeah, go crazy. It's 3D. Okay, good. So it's not, it doesn't lie flat like it does on the page. Let me ask you this. 
what is the farthest angle you can put four things around a central and make them be? Could you make those carbons any further, or those hydrogens any further away from each other? Assuming they're all the same size, just like that. Are the angles, is there anything you could do to make them further apart? Or is that angle good? It's an interesting shape. This shape, is that angle bigger or smaller than 90 degrees? Bigger, bigger than 90 degrees apart. In fact, it's a very special angle. It's 109.5 degrees. So let's, what I want to talk about here is this. If you take a look at your note now, um, I start by saying that hybrid orbitals don't like each other. And what I mean by that is this. S, P, D, and F orbitals all have a fixed shape. Do you remember we put that diagram up the other day? And S orbitals are always a circle. P orbitals have this kind of dumbbell shape or figure eight shape to them, right? And that gets kind of weird. The D orbitals have this kind of double dumbbell and the F orbitals, it's just bizarre. Can, can we agree? Okay. But if you look specifically um, I want to go on to the second page. By the way, this looks like a big note, but there's actually very little writing in it. Um, I'm also just kind of walking you through something. I want you to look at this diagram. And if you look at the orbitals we start with when we hybridize, the S looks like what? If we look at these orbitals, which one of these is the S? Which one? This one? Sure, what do we notice about that shape? It's a circle. Okay. What about the P's? Sorry? The figure eights. What else do you notice? Look, this one goes along what axis? The Y. The y. And this one goes along the Z. What's the angle between those two? What's the angle between the Y axis and the Z axis? Nope. It's weird. It looks like 45 because of the way we've drawn it. But imagine if this is the y-axis, this is the x, and the z comes up like this. What's the angle between those two? 90. If you imagine a cross, can everyone picture that? A cross is the y-axis and the z-axis. And what angle are the arms of a cross to each other? 90 degrees. Can you picture that? Okay, and then this other one should be easy. What about the x and the y axis, what angle do they go at to each other? 90. Yeah, the x and the y axis, we know this, right? If you look at a graph, what angle are they to each other? 90, 90 degrees. So all of the p orbitals are at what angle to each other? 90. 90 degrees. So if carbon made bonds along its p orbitals, what angles would the hydrogens be away from each other? Look up here. We said the p orbitals are like an x and that cross that comes through them. They're all at 90 degrees to each other. Does that make sense? That's the shape of a p orbital. This is the place where this chorus starts to get really visual, if you're a visual spatial thinker. But just to show you, if carbon bonded with its p orbitals, we would expect to see the atoms at Oh, jeez. Uh, well, thank you very much. We would expect to see the atoms at 90 degrees to each other, like this, because that's how the p orbitals are formed. And there'll be another one down here. Does that make sense? Kind of. I'm seeing a lot of glazed so eyes. It's okay to tell me if it's not making sense. Anyway. P orbitals have a fixed shape, but hybrid orbitals, when we make them, can always move and do always move to make the distance between them as big as possible. So when you make a hybrid orbital, the hybrid orbitals try to space themselves as far away from each other as they can. And hold your little CH4 up again. That is the biggest angle you can put four bonds coming out of a central hub at. It's 109.5 degrees. How would you describe that shape? It's cool. Okay, I like that it's cool. Is it like anything in your day-to-day -day life, maybe? It's kind of, 
Yeah, the bottom kind of makes a pyramid, doesn't it? It's like a pyramid with a spoke sticking up the top. Any uh, any photographers in the room? Yeah, this is the kind of the shape we build tripods from. Or, you know, if you've ever seen like an old-fashioned mic stand, it usually has three legs at the base like that and one sticking up. Has anyone seen something like that? But that shape, and you see it drawn here, is called a tetrahedron. All right, so we make sp3 hybrid orbitals when we take one s orbital and three p orbitals, and we make four hybridals from them. And these are not at 90 degrees to each other. They're at 109.5 degrees. All right, it's a magic number. I mean, it's not a magic number at all, but it is an important number. It's the greatest possible angle between four spokes from a central point and we call that shape a tetrahedron. Why would the orbitals want to get as far away from each other as possible? Yeah, because the orbitals are full of electrons. The electrons are all negative, so they repel one another. Does that make sense? The other thing is just in terms of space, these atoms have as much space as is possible from one another. Now, we know that a sigma bond can go in a hybrid orbital. What else can go in a hybrid orbital? Yep. A lone pair, a lone pair of electrons. So imagine now if one of the atoms in your CH4, hold your CH4 up. I want you to take one of the atoms and put electrons instead and take the atom off. You can even leave the stick if you want to imagine where the electrons go. Okay, hold it up now. So imagine that empty spring or that empty stick is just a pair of electrons. What shape is that atom now? Is it? Because now there's just the four atoms, the central one and the three that surround it. If it helps to visualize it, maybe take the spring out for a second, just to look at just the atoms that are left. What would we call that shape? Yeah, actually that's exactly the word we use, pyramid. Can anyone think, uh, well, I'll show you actually, an example of something that looks like that is ammonia. And if you look at this diagram down below, in the first example we built CH4, and we said that it was a tetrahedron. Yep. There you go. In the second example, what's now at the top? Yeah, what's that E mean? Electrons. So when electrons are at the top, we're left with something like what you have in front of you now. And we say that its shape is a pyramid. Does that make sense? Now, what was the angle of a tetrahedron, we said? Magic angle, we're going to talk about it a lot. Okay, I want you to look at ammonia. What's ammonia's bond angle? 107. What's happened? Yeah, it's gotten bigger or smaller? Smaller. smaller. Okay. Why might it get smaller? Well, I made, an, I made a little note for you here, where it says a little note about lone pairs. Lone pairs of electron take up, go away, take up more space than bonding orbitals, all right? A lone pair of electrons you can think of as being big and bulky. So when we have a lone pair, they crowd out all the other orbitals, and the other orbitals have to get a little bit closer to each other. Does that make sense? As we add more and more lone pairs, the angles get just a little bit smaller. Now, is 107 much smaller than 109.5? No, just a little bit but the angles have to get smaller. Now I want you to imagine, if electrons can fit in here, what if two of the orbitals were, were filled with electrons? What would it look like then? So take your molecule and take off another atom, because now we're gonna have it just with two atoms attached to it, two sigma bonds, 
and two lone pairs of electrons. Sorry? Okay. Yeah, so take off another one. So it just has two. Okay, sorry. I never doubted you. All right, everyone hold that up. So that's still sp3 hybridization. It still has four orbitals. What are in the orbitals now? Two of them have lone pairs of electrons, and two of them have, yeah, they have atoms attached. So an example of something like that would be water, right? Water has two lone pairs of electrons and two hydrogens attached to an oxygen in the middle. How would you describe the shape of the thing in front of you? Okay, that's not the term chemists use, but it does kind of look like Mickey Mouse ears. But it's not a very sciencey word, actually. Scientists say, you know, that looks bent. It looks bent. <laughs> All right, could we? Shh. Could we have a situation where there were three lone pairs of electrons? Sure, show me that. Take the last atom off. Yeah, look at that. Hold it up. How would we describe that shape? Yeah, straight, it's a straight, it's a straight line, good. So we say it's linear. Now, listen, shh. I'm actually going to say that the bond angle doesn't exist because a bond angle is the angle between two bonds. And are there two bonds here? No, there's just one. So there's no bond angle. But look at me. If you have sp3 hybridization, there's four possibilities. It could be making four bonds, like methane, in which case, what's the shape? Tetrahedral, all right? It's that shape that we had to begin with, the tripod shape, tetrahedral. But it may only be making three bonds if it has a pair of electrons. What's its shape then? Pyramid. Pyramid. It may only be making two bonds, in which case it is bent. And it may only be making one bond, in which case it's just a, a straight line. Does anyone else struggle with this kind of visual stuff as much as I do? Or is this good for you? Good. See, this stuff is killer for me. I'm awful at it. I had to take a test once called the DAT, the Dental Aptitude Test. I thought I might want to be a dentist. And uh, there's six sections to it, including the first one where you have to carve a piece of soap with a scalpel. They give you like a, a tube of soap and an orthographic drawing, a ruler, and a scalpel. And you have to like carve this thing. And I thought for sure I was going to cut myself and have to hand in like a bloody piece of soap. But I didn't. I did all right. And then there's a math section. I did pretty well. The chemistry section did really well. Biology section. Did really well, feeling good. Literacy section did all right. And then there's the only section that Canadian universities look at. Canadian universities don't look at any of those sections that I'll remind you I did pretty well on. They only look at one called the perceptual ability test, which is all questions that look at how you think in 3D space. And I scored in the seventh percentiles, which means that of 100 people taking the test, I would have beat six of them. Another way of thinking it is this. If you take out everyone who didn't fall unconscious, I got last place. It was real bad. So I'm not a visual thinker. So I struggle with this stuff. I find this really hard to picture. I find that the models help. Um, one thing is, I will leave the model kits out during tests. When I wrote exams in university, you were actually allowed to bring your model kit in with you. Everyone had to buy a model kit at the beginning of chemistry. And for me, that was a savior because I don't think well in three dimensions. I really struggle with that. So that was something that really helped me in my career um, as, a, uh, as a student. So that's something I'm gonna make available to you guys as well if you like it. You're more than welcome to, uh, to use the model kits at any time if you want. But does that make sense? Okay, so that's sp3 hybridization. And remember, sp3 hybridization happens when we have what kind of bonds? Sigma bonds, or when we have what else? Lone pairs. What do we have to not have? Pi. Yeah, we can't have any pi bonds, 
if we're going to have sp3 hybridization. So guys, look at me. If you draw a Lewis structure and you see a double bond, can it be sp3 hybridization? No, right? As soon as there's a pi bond, can't be this. What if you have a triple bond? Can it be sp3 hybridization? No. no. So the first step for any question is always to draw the Lewis diagram, right? And that's why if you notice, the last bunch of days in class, every time I ask any question, step one is always count your electrons, draw a Lewis diagram. It's always step one. So the case we just did assumes that there's no double bonds, no triple bonds. If I have just a single double bond, what kind of hybridization do I have now? So sp3 uses an s and three p's, and it gives me four hybrid orbitals ready to either make a sigma bond or ready to hold a lone pair of electrons. If I now make a, a double bond, if I now have one pi bond, what kind of hybridization do we use? sp2. Because sp2 leaves me with one what? It leaves me with one p orbital. And the p orbitals are what we use to make what kind of bond? Pi bonds. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, so let's go to the second page now, where it talks about sp2 hybridization. Okay, so sp2 hybridization occurs when we take a single s orbital and two p orbitals. And do you see that right here? We're taking an s orbital and two p orbitals, and what do we make out of them? Yeah, we make hybrid orbitals that are ready to make either a sigma bond or ready to make lone pairs. And in this case, I want you to look, and we're going to make one. Take out that carbon again. Now remember, this happens because we make at least one, well, exactly one double bond, right? So take a pair of springs and make a double bond between carbon and any of the other ones that has two holes. So the red ones signify oxygen. The red one will always make two bonds for you. Okay, and then make two single bonds after that. So I want you to make one double bond and two single bonds. And when you're done, hold it up. Doesn't matter what colors you use. Nope, that's two double bonds. That's not what I want. So I want one double bond and two single bonds. Okay. Now, the neat thing about this is, when we did the other, we got that tetrahedron shape, right? And when I said, what's it look like? The first comment I got was, oh, it's three-dimensional, right? We made this like tripod, it's three-dimensional. What about this? Can everyone hold those up? Good, good. Do you guys have one? Okay. Can I help you? Yeah, so what? No problem. What we're going to do is make a double bond. So we're going to take carbon. We can make four bonds, right? And we're going to make two bonds. And then we're going to make two single bonds. One there. And one. So now we have two single, and I can put all the springs in the box. So there we go. Does that make sense? Okay. So guys, can everyone hold those up? Does it look something like this? Yeah. Okay. Now the first one we said was three-dimensional. Is this three-dimensional? Uh, I mean, if you ignore the springs, I want you to hold it in front of you and look at it flat. So it's flat, so it's laying as, oh, other way, like this. Do you see how basically it makes a flat plane? Right, they all go in one straight line. Can you line it up like that? Look at it in front of you like this, and it makes one perfect straight flat line. It's actually 
a two-dimensional object. Can you see that? They all, I know that you can't sit it down flat because of the springs, but imagine if you squeeze the springs, it would sit perfectly flat on your desk. And the springs have nothing to do with the molecular geometry, they're just the physical thing that is going together. So if you ever do that, kind of squish it down on your desk in front of you and see that it lies flat. What shape would you say this makes? What shape would you say this makes? Yeah. Rudolph. Rudolph? Yeah. As in the right nose frame here? Yeah. Why? Okay, it's okay. I like it. Fair enough. Let me ask you this, guys. If you drew a line between each of the surrounding atoms, what shape would you get? Is it? A triangle. Good. So we call this shape trigonal, which means that it's a plan uh, triangle, and planar, which means that it's flat. Trigonal planar. That's just a fancy way of saying it's a flat triangle. Now, just like last time, we know that these hybrid orbitals don't just hold uh, sigma bonds. What else could be in one of these hybrid orbitals? A lone pair. A lone pair. So I want you to take one of the atoms off. Now, can we take the atom off that we're making a double bond to? No, but take one of the other ones off. And what shape do you get now? I'm hearing Mickey Mouse again. How did we, have we seen a shape like this before? Yeah, how did we describe it last time? Oh, bent. Bent, good. So here if you look, Ignoring the electrons, all we get is this bent shape here. Whereas in the previous one, we had this triangle shape. All right, so we call this bent. And again, what if we had two lone pairs of electrons? What if we took the other atom off? Obviously, we can't take the one off that we're making a double bond to, but we can remove the other one. What do we get then? Yeah, what's that look like? Um, yeah, straight line. So we say that it is linear. And again, remember, what did we say was true about lone pairs of electrons? Yeah, but they take up a little bit more space. If you look, the trigonal planar, sp2 hybridization is normally at what angle? 120, but for sulfur dioxide, where we have a lone pair of electrons, what's that angle become? 119, all right? Because those lone pairs of electrons are greedy. They take up a bit more than their fair share of space. So now, guys, how do we know if something is sp2 hybridization again? We just look to see if there is one double bond, all right? So sp2 hybridization, we're looking at things that have one double bond. And if something has one double bond, what shape could its molecule possibly be? If you look, all three of these here have one double bond, and the three possible shapes are, yeah, trigonal planar, flat triangle, or bent, or linear. And I wanted to make a note, there's an easy way to remember, or easy-ish way to remember this. SP2 hybridization, all of the shapes are fun. What else? They're all two-dimensional, right? That flat triangle is two-dimensional. The bent molecule is two-dimensional. And obviously the linear is two-dimensional. So SP2 always gives you two-dimensional shapes. Maybe that helps you, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. But sp3 hybridization gave us nice 
3D shapes. There you go. That's how I remember it. Again, I uh, I feel really stupid when it comes to this stuff because I still struggle with it. I teach it now, but I'm not a visual spatial guy, so little clues like that are useful to me. SP3, those are the 3D shapes, right? The pyramidal, a pyramid is a 3D shape. Or the tetrahedron, which I think of being like a tripod, that's a 3D shape. Whereas the SP2 is the flat triangle, that's a 2D shape. All right, and then they can both be bent and they can both be linear if they've got lone pairs. All right, what's the last kind of hybridization we talked about? SP3, SP2, and then SP. What kind of molecule would we see SP hybridization in? Again, again, yeah. Oh, what did I leave out? Oh, I'm sorry, the angle is 120 degrees. I talked about below, but I didn't write it here. Yeah, the bond angle for these is 120 degrees. Sorry. All right, SP hybridization happens when we take what? What do we take to make SP hybridization? Yeah, we take a single S orbital, and then we take a single P orbital. So how many P orbitals do we have left over in this case? There were three to begin with. We've used one of them, so there are two. Why do we keep P orbitals again? To make, to make pi bonds. So how many pi bonds must this have? Two. How do you get two by pi bonds? What are you looking for to see if you have this kind of hybridization? How many double bonds? Two. Or maybe a, a triple bond would also give you two pi bonds, right? So really quickly, what you're looking for here is, oh, I should have put the two there instead of on the line above. You're looking for two double bonds or one triple bond. That's your clue that this is the kind of hybridization we're dealing with. And remember when we were drawing the Lewis diagrams the other day, we counted how many sigma bonds, counted how many pi bonds? We'll do that again today and tomorrow for practice. Now let's look at a case like this. I want you to make something with two double bonds right now. So take your carbon and have it make two double bonds. Last time we made one, this time let's make two. Good, nice job, Ahmed. And once you've got it, hold it up. All right, you guys got one. Now a second double bond. Okay, what shape do we end up with? I'll talk to everyone later. But you guys. You figure it with the bonds, sure, but just look at the atoms. You're at the bonds. They are all in a strong So sp3 is three-dimensional, sp2 is two-dimensional, and then sp is just one-dimensional. They can only make a straight line. What would the angle be between these two bonds? It's a straight line. Almost. 90 would be like this. <laughs> All right, so everybody hold up the. Oh, you need more springs, don't you? Okay, look at somebody else's. Did you guys get a. Did you guys get one? Hey, looking good. Did you get one? Good. Okay. Guys, look here. Describe this shape to me. Ignore the bonds. Look just at the three atoms. They make what? What do they make? A line. Okay, look here. SP3 gave us those wonderful three-dimensional shapes, right? The tetrahedron, the pyramid. SP2 gave us all two-dimensional shapes, right? The flat triangle or the bent molecule. How many dimensions is this? One. This is a one-dimensional object. It's a straight line. So if you see the now, what's the angle between those two bonds if it's a straight line? 180 degrees. Good. So if we go fill the blanks in, the new bond angle is 180 degrees. 
And this makes a line. Okay, and then what's the other way that we could make two pi bonds? We could also be making a triple bond, couldn't we? The triple bonds don't work very nicely with the model kits because the springs aren't long enough and springy enough, but you can try. See if you can get a triple bond. But I want you to look, look here. Even if we do a triple bond, it is still, of course, just a straight line. Someone got a triple bond to work nicely without it springing apart. The big kits are a little better for this. There you go. Nice. Good. And now look, even if you added a second atom, even if it made another sigma bond, it would still make a nice straight line. Or if a lone pair of electrons were there, it would also make a straight line. So SP hybridization can only make straight lines, one dimensional. Okay, with that in mind, the next sheet, I've given you a handy little cheat sheet, a handy little way to remember them. So if you look, if we have sp3 hybridization, sp2 hybridization, or just sp, it tells you the possible shapes. The only thing I'd like to add is to remind yourself that you need two double bonds in sp and one double bond in sp2, I would draw one in. Because that's our hint, right? Two pi bonds, one pi bond, and sp3 happens when we have, how many pi, pi bonds if it's sp3? That's right. No pi bonds. Now you might be wondering, how do I ask you a question about this? I thought you might be. All right, so let's, let's go through an example. And the first thing I've said is, what's the Lewis structure of the carbonate ion? So if we're drawing a Lewis structure, what do I have to do? Count, Count the electrons. How many does carbon give us? Four. Four in the in the valence. It's six total. Four in the valence. Yeah. Good. How many oxygens do we have? Six. Three. They have six each yeah. for a total of? Twelve. Eighteen. And what else do I have to do with this? A charge of negative two. So what do I do with that? Yeah, two more electrons. What's that total? That sums out to 24 electrons. Good. Okay. What do I do next? Draw it. What goes in the middle? Carbon. Why does carbon go in the middle? It's got the lowest electronegativity. So carbon goes in the middle. Everything else goes around it. Okay. And then what do I do next? Sigma bonds. Okay, what do I do next? Make sure, balance. Make sure water balance. Carbon? Yeah. Not the carbon, the oxygen. oxygen. Okay, so they all need six more electrons. Just like that. Are these, I'm hoping, are these starting to feel boring now? Yeah. Or are they still kind of scary? Boring. A little scary? They'll be less scary as we go, I promise. I don't promise, but I hope. I hope. Um, okay, what do we do after we've drawn those electrons around? Do we? What do we do next? Count electrons. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. How's that? Okay. And now, what do I have to do? I check out the carbon in the middle. 
How many bonds, how many electrons does it have? Six. How many does it need? Eight. How do I solve this? Can I add two more like that? No, why can't I do that? Because I only have 24 electrons to work with. So what do I have to make? I have to make a pi bond. For the, for the purpose of our course right now, does it matter which oxygen I choose? No. No, I'm going to choose top left because yeah. Kevin told me to, and I, I do what I'm told. Okay. Now, let's talk about carbon. The next question asks me, what is the hybridization of the carbon? Here's how I want to start answering these questions. What are the electrons in carbon doing? So carbon is making what? And there's only three possible things. There's sigma bonds, there's pi bonds, and there's lone pairs, right? So if we're talking about carbon, what does it have? How many lone pairs? For carbon. None. How many sigma bonds is carbon making? That's a sigma bond, that's a sigma bond. What about this? Three. And how many pi bonds? One. Okay. If we're making one pi bond, what kind of hybridization is it? Or remember I just said hint-wise. If we have a, just a double bond, what's the hybridization? Go back and check your notes. SP2. SP2, all right, because one pi bond. Okay, so now the last question is, what's the likely shape and the bonding? Well, if it's SP2, what are the possible shapes? Look at your chart. It could be a flat triangle, trigonal planar, or it could be bent. And if it's just two atoms, it can always be a straight line. Which one is this? Is this trigonal planar, bent, or a straight line? Look at the picture. Trigonal planar. Trigonal planar, right? Got it. Because how many atoms are there? Three. Three. Well, four. The one in the middle and three around. And so look at your chart. On your chart, if you have sp2 and then three around and one in the middle, its shape is trigonal planar. So there we go. So the shape would be trigonal planar. And if it's trigonal planar, what should the bond angle be? Well, are there any, yeah, because are there any lone pairs? Yeah, so should there be anything to make that bond angle smaller? No. That is a question. That's a test question. In fact, if you go look at last year's unit one test, you'll see that that question comes right from it, word for word, word for word. One just like it. I won't use carbonate. There'll be a question just like that. Let's do another example. Ethine, C2H2. This time I want you guys to draw the Lewis structure. Take a minute. Draw me a Lewis structure for ethine, which is C2H2. Actually, let me just give you one hint. Just pick one of the carbons to be the center atom. Just pick one of them, and then, well, I'll give you the shape. How's that? What? I'm going to tell you that we have a central carbon. It's got an H over here. It's got a C over here that's connected to another H. That's the starting shape, and treat this as your middle, okay? Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. And on trickier drawings, I will give you hints, by the way, even on a test. If I gave you a trickier drawing, I would give you a hint. Because I'm so not digital. I struggle with that, I like to. Assume that everyone struggles with the same thing. Probably you guys are much better than that. Beautiful. Yeah, love it. 
You just, it's kind of cool. You just hold the first button. Boy, that's an nice one. Nifty. Yeah, cool, eh? Okay, Mr. Zabo, if I can have your eyes here. Mr. Zabo has told me that I have how many electrons total? Ten. And he's told me I have the two carbons connected with a triple bond. And then, obviously, all you can do is a single bond to a hydrogen like that, right? Is he right? Yeah. Yeah, looks good. Okay. Let's talk about this carbon. What kind of bonds is it making? Okay, so it's got how many sigmas? Two sigma bonds. How many uh, pi bonds? Two, because it's making that triple bond, right? Does it have any lone pairs? Okay, if it's making two sigma bonds and two pi bonds, what kind of hybridization does it have to be? SP, because we need to save two of the p orbitals. So it is SP hybridization. And if it's SP hybridization, what does the shape have to be? What is it? Linear. It's got to make a straight line. And if it's making a straight line, what's the bond angle? Uh, well, in this case, we do actually have a bunch of bonds. So we could get an angle here. What is it? 180. Good. Does that feel like it maybe comes together? Yes. I find that there's two types of students in this class. And I'll and you can guess which type I was. There's the type of kid who found it confusing up till now, and then you add this visual element and they go Oh, I get it. I can see that. I see how it comes together. Or you get kids who found it a little confusing, and then you add the visual element, and they go, Oh my god, I hate life. This makes no sense. I was the second one. Definitely. Definitely the second one. Um, but I, I can tell you something else. It does come to you eventually. eventually. Some people it comes to quickly. That visual cue really helps them. Other people, they have to go... Okay, I'm going to work my way through this. I have to work with the model kits. If you want practice, remember the other night I gave you that sheet of questions where I asked you to draw Lewis structures? Today for homework, I'm going to ask you to go back to that sheet and just tell me what shape every one of those things is. Oh. Right? And tell me what the bond angles would be. But let's look at one more example. Nitrite, NO2 minus. And we may have time, we may not. We'll see what happens. But start at least. If we're making a Lewis structure, what's our first step? Okay, so get go and draw a Lewis structure of nitrite, and then see if you can tell me about its shape. By the way, I can't stress enough, like I'm around every day. If you are struggling with this, come for help. Sometimes one-on-one -on -one is a lot more beneficial than having somebody yap at 20 people all at once. Yep. 
Yeah. Just you know, put these together. It'll just make life easier. Okay. So you're right. So how do we make how do we get nitrogen in these two more? We make a yeah, you know. Good. Yep. Just correct. Yeah, looks good. No, 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 because what did nitrogen have? Okay, you, you gotta, you gotta, right. you haven't drawn any electrons. You haven't followed the steps. And if you don't follow the steps, no, you're gonna end up with a random answer, right? You have to go through the steps. So the first, and nice and big, drop big, all right? Because you're totally capable of getting that. You just, what you need to do, right? See what we did. Okay, so start with, start with your nitrogen in the middle. And I'll do it with you. Guys, what was the count on this? How many electrons total? How many? 18. So we should get 18 electrons. Here, I'm going to do it together, okay? So we're going to put what in the middle? Oh, nitrogen. Why does nitrogen go in the middle? Plus electronegativity. It's the lowest electronegativity. Good. What goes around it? Oxygens. Okay. Now, what's the first step once we've drawn everything on? Sigma bonds. Sigma bonds. Just like that, right? And you're totally good up to here. Yeah. Now, what's the next step? Count the reduction. No, before we uh, count, we fill in the surroundings. Fill in the surrounding oxygens. Just like that. Now what do we do? Now we now we count. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. Is that enough? Nope. How many do I need? Eighteen. So I put two here. Now there's only one more step, which is what? By the way, the bell's gonna ring. Can you guys give me 40 seconds to get through this so you have the complete note? Yeah. Okay. So nitrogen still needs two more. Can I just add them? No, because then we'd have 20 electrons, right? So where's nitrogen going to get two more? Making a double bond with either of the oxygens, yes? I'm going to pick this one. Just give it two seconds, guys. So all together, how many double bonds, how many pi bonds is this making? One pi bond. If it's making one pi bond, what kind of hybridization is that? SP2. So now look at the SP2 chart. If you have an SP2 with two atoms around it and one lone pair of electrons, what shape is that? It's bent. Oh, which means that it's actually going to look like this. And really quickly, what angle would we expect? SP2 is normally 120, right? We'd say maybe 119 degrees. By the way, that's not exact. You can't predict exactly, but what we know is it'll be a little less than 120, right? Okay, come get help if you need it. If you haven't finished your independent study package, make sure you get that done. There's also yesterday's assignment. So we got lots of things we're working on. That's okay, because you're gonna have a lot of time over the next couple of days, and those assignments are good review for the upcoming test. This is the end of the major instructions. Oh, good. Is it stable? No, it's uh, uh, stable. It is right over there. Yeah. So now is good. Actually, let me just stop this broadcast.